what have we talked about this year? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hello, everyone. This is Jill from the North Woods. If you listen to my other podcast, you know on the anniversary of my podcast, I talk about a recap of the main concepts that we talked about. And then the show notes is a series of links to those episodes in case you're interested in them. But we'll talk about the lessons that we learned. And maybe there's something you meant to try, but you just never got to it. So that's what we're going to try to talk about today. The first lesson in all of this was my disclaimer, which just says, I'm not a pastor. I have no education in theology or Bible studies. I'm just a regular Jill Schmo who's trying to make her way through the Bible, reading books, learning more about things, so that we can figure this out together. I believe that we're on this great adventure that we're taking with God's help to go from paradise to paradise, Eden to heaven. And how can we do this more in line with what God wants, which therefore makes our lives better. So that brings us to our second episode. But we talked about the book Better Than Eden by Nancy Guthrie. I thought this was a great book because it explains probably what God had in mind for the Garden of Eden, that it was our paradise on earth. And sometimes Eden, I think, has the same problem as heaven is, which we talked about in episode three, where people thought it was boring. It was just a big garden. We walked around naming things. But instead, when you look at all our technology and our achievements of humanity, it wasn't that we were not meant to have that in Eden. We were just going to do so in a way that did not include sin, hate, anger, hurt, and all the things that came along with sin. Because of sin and the damage we do with our sin inside of Eden, we were kept out. God still cared for us. He sewed us our first clothes and he wrote covenant after covenant in order to be a part of our lives. Now we have the scriptures. So I thought that book was a great start to this podcast. I wanted to show where we're starting from. Then episode three, we talked about the journey home by using the book Home, How Heaven and the New Earth Satisfies Our Deepest Longings by Elise Fitzpatrick. I love this book. It gives this image of everything we know about heaven based on what it says about it in the Bible. And again, bad rap because we think of cherubim and clouds and harps and everyone singing. And instead, it is about us continuing the work we do on earth. Work on earth is a training ground for what we're going to do in heaven. And so we find something fulfilling, something that's going to use our skills and talent in the most perfect way possible, and without the hurt, without the sin, and instead just being amazed at God's creation, what we create. We know that God's creative because he created us, and we're creative people, and he created us in his image. So I thought that book gave a good image of our destination on this great adventure that we're using small steps to get to. The fourth episode talked about the book Fearless from Max Lucado. And he talks about why we shouldn't be so afraid. When we go out into big journeys together, it can be pretty scary to follow the path of God and to do the things he asks us. Sometimes it is uncomfortable. And God never promised us that we would not be uncomfortable. In fact, he assured us that we would be uncomfortable, but also we would be hated. We would be torn down because of our belief in Jesus. And so fearless is the book I picked for the next part so we can go into this walk together without being so afraid. In episode six in December, we talked about the book, My Heart, Christ's Home by Robert Boyd Munger. And this book was the first book I read as a brand new Christian. And I loved the analogy of this house of your soul, I guess, so to speak. And Jesus is walking around and asking, well, you know, in your entertainment, are you doing things that are ungodly? Why don't you show me? Ooh, what's in this closet? Again, my favorite analogy in this whole book was this closet. And the guy in the book wouldn't want to open the closet to Jesus. He says, well, there's not so nice things in there, things I don't want you to see. And that was the point. Jesus wants to see the things 
that we may not want to show him, but if we do show him, he will help us heal from whatever is in that closet. But it goes through the whole house as an analogy of letting Christ in everywhere. Episode 7, 8, and 9, we talked about Christmas, using the book from Tim Keller, Hidden Christmas. It was a really good look at what the message of Christmas really is about Jesus, not just a baby, but the king. And I thought it was a fantastic way to look at Christmas in a whole new way. After that point, on episode 10 and 11, I talked about the book Stilte, The Dutch Art of Quietude by Mirjam van der Witt. What a great book it was about being quiet, focusing on the presence of God when we pray, when we study the word. I don't live in a quiet world. I'm always having noise, podcasts. I'm usually listening to books. I mean, you imagine, I have two podcasts where I have to read a book every week. So there is something going on in my life at all times. But she expresses the whole point of getting that quiet, that peace, that focus, and even building a room or a place that would make that peace happen. And I kind of just did it recently. I redid the room I record in, and I created it into this craft, recording, but also a reading room. And it has the candles and the comfy place to sit. And that was part of what I had in mind, is I wanted that Dutch quietness, a place where I could focus on God's word. I just built myself that last week. I'll let you know how it goes. We talked in a few books about the canon and the Bible itself. And this information comes from Why I Trust the Bible by William D. Mounts. He was a scholar who worked on the ESV and the NIV translations. And he does this deep dive. I talked about this book into two formats. One talking about the canon, like what got ruled in and what got ruled out and what do we think was right away at the beginning of the Bible and why some books got taken out like the Apocrypha. Awesome book about that. But later on, we did another conversation where he talks about the different translations and what it means to be literal, not literal. And it's not quite as clear cut as you think. When we talked about that particular topic, Sometimes if we're literal, someone mentioned that it sounds like Yoda talking. The language doesn't make sense or they'll use words that doesn't make sense to a real human being like propitiation. That's fine if you're a pastor and you're a scholar and you're educated and you're looking up every word. But for the mere mortal like us, you might not know what those words mean. So some of the other translations are trying to be inaccurate or non-literal with the Bible. They're just trying to say things in a way that explains the concept to us in the way that we'll really understand it. So I think so far is probably my favorite book of last year. It really points out the real truth of how we got our scriptures, what's in it, and there's even more topics we can talk about out of this book. So I recommend it highly as my favorite book of the year. We did a couple episodes by a book by Robert J. Morgan called The Red Sea Rules. And those books are basically what did we learn from our time coming out of the Red Sea about God's faithfulness, what he hopes from us, and what rules can we do so that we know how to get out of our own deep waters? What can we do to keep our eyes on God? And I like this book quite a bit. I talked about C.S. Lewis and the screw tape letters. It's always a fascinating read because it's from the point of view, you probably know this, of demons talking about how they can corrupt mankind. And sometimes I think when we listen to God, we hear this, don't do this and don't do that. And it sounds like a lot of don'ts. But when you look at it from the point of view of this is how demons get inside you, or this is how they pry you away from your faith. Are you saying that your boyfriend that you're living with is more important than God? That's, you know, or something like that. It's how we can live a life protected from the temptations and the evils around us in the world. I really liked that whole piece. Then I talked over the Lent time about the book, 40 Days of Decrease, A Different Kind of Hunger, A Different Kind of Fast by Alicia Britt Chole. This book, I think, stuck with me also throughout the year. 
because it was telling us instead of maybe scheming a way to give up a food that maybe we like, maybe we don't like, but instead this book went through 40 different disciplines of things to give up to remind us of each aspect of God, his grace, his forgiveness, his kindness, his looking out for us, his pain and suffering that he went through on the cross. And it put it in such a perspective. Unfortunately, when I did this review of the book, I was already mostly through the Lenten season. Next Lent, I hope to go through these steps. Essentially, it's exactly what it says, 40 days of steps and try out what she says. I'm, I'm very intrigued by that. Sometimes I write my own podcasts and I talked about like the ancient uh, neighbors of Israel. I like this one because I called it Wigged Out Saturday. I just had this image when I was sitting at church thinking about the disciples and how we believed in Jesus. We thought this was going to happen. And now you're at Saturday after the crucifixion, right before the Sunday of Easter. And you're thinking, oh no, what happened? It doesn't really say what they did on that Saturday, except they were probably hiding. But I now call it Wigged Out Saturday, which is all the apostles freaking out because of the death of Jesus and just kind of thinking a little bit about what it must be like. We know how the story ends. We have the books of the Bible. They did not know how this was going to go. I had a couple of podcasts talking about evangelism in um, the method I use, which I call it the chicken method of sharing your faith. It's a little bit uh, like making someone invite you to do so, but it's trying not to be offensive to people, but still say the honest truth about your faith. And then the book talking about your faith style. This was a presentation that I do at Christian colleges, and I thought it would make an interesting podcast to talk about these two things together. In episode 29, I did a different kind of take about faith and Star Trek. Gene Roddenberry was a very famous atheist. And he didn't really believe that faith, like many science fiction writers in the 50s, belonged in the future. We're going to learn our way out of that. We're going to get away from all those things, right? We're going to outgrow it. And instead, he had people around him like Nichelle Nichols, who was a woman of faith. And so she, every once in a while, got something snuck in, just like when they encountered this colony of people who worshiped the sun. And Spock said, it is illogical to worship the sun in the sky. And Nichelle Nichols says, no, Mr. Spock, it's the son of God. I don't know how she snuck that in there, but good for her. But talking a little bit about Star Trek and science fiction and faith. I used um, a children's book called God in Nature by Jessica Dobler to talk a little bit about the miracles of God in nature. One of the ways I feel the closest with God is when I'm out hiking around. I see the systems that God created. We think about the things that God created. Look at that beautiful bird or look at that weird monkey. But instead, what he created that is even more amazing is the fact that things can adapt, that the world changes and creatures go along and change with it. But also this whole food of life, the flower that the bug eats, the And then the lizard that eats the bug and then the animal that eats the lizard. It's a structure so that everything gets fed, a whole system so that life can be maintained on Earth. And I like that children's book. I thought it was adorable. I would give that to kids and sort of discuss God in our nature around us. Then we kind of had a hard series in episode 34 where we started with the book Not a Fan by Kyle Edelman. This is a tough book. But it gives you the tough look at how hard faith can be and how hard living a faithful world can be for all of us. It can be difficult, but being honest with people and being honest with ourselves is where we can start to take our relationships higher and bring our love higher too. Then comes the Bob Goff book, Love Does, where Bob is an incredible guy. He had people in his life that did extreme measures to love him. And now does extreme measures to love the people around him and talking about how we just don't say, I love you, but we show people that true Christian love by the actions we take and the things we do. We had a fun episode, 37, where we talked about Dolly Parton. She wrote a book about achieving your dreams, but it was done in a sense of faith 
being a woman or a person of faith. And I just thought it was just such a sweet book. I really enjoyed reading that book, especially after we had such a tough series from the other two. Episode 39, we talked about John 316 from Max Lucado's book. That was a big book when it came out. I mean, every Christian bookstore had it everywhere and I never read it. And so I was really glad I got a chance to read it now. And it shows us how just one passage of the Bible just erupts of love that God has for us. And my favorite thing that Max Lucado says is, how do you translate the word everybody? Means everybody. I love that. Episode 41, we talked about Sadie Robertson Huff's book about social media. She's one of the Duck Dynasty daughters, and her father is Willie Robinson. And the book is Who Are You Following? Pursuing Jesus in a Social Media Obsessed World. Talks about how can we be better Christians using social media. That doesn't necessarily mean turning it off. It doesn't mean unfollowing people, but it means being a positive representative of Christ in social media, just like we're trying to be in the world, but also protecting our souls while we join in on social media. I thought she wrote a really fantastic book. I can't wait to read more from her. Then in episode 48, just recently, we talked about Dangerous Prayer. And this book comes from the book Dangerous Prayer by Craig Groeschel. I like the book because it was talking about how, me included, sometimes we pray in a very safe way, all good things. But can we take it a step up and start praying dangerous prayers? Like, here I am, send me. Ooh, scary. So I like that book as well. It really is one of those books that challenges you to just do better. And then we ended the year on episode 49. I mean, I'm not doing every episode that we talked about. By Lead Like Jesus by Ken Blanchard, Phil Hodges, and Phyllis Hendry. It gives a good overview, and the book is a lot bigger than what I was able to review, of how we can be Christian leaders, how we can lead people not just in church ways or Christ-centered ways, but how even at work, we can be the kind of leader who listens, who cares about the people we're leading, and to keep pride and good things out of our own system. So it was a great book to talk about all of us who are leaders. Now you might think, I'm not a leader. I have a boss. But you know what? You're a leader regardless of what position you're in. So this book, teaches a good way to help be a leader to people. I think the world, more than anything, needs leadership. So we talked about other topics, but I thought those were the high points of last year's podcast. You can let me know what you thought your high point of last year's podcast. Hopefully you have one. But you can always email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. And if you have a favorite podcast of last year, email me. You can find me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. And just remember, our way through next year is going to take small steps. Small steps.